All righty, I think we're live. Welcome everybody to the CNC with Dave Gatton show. Um, I've got my trusty partner, uh, Javi Sweta. Howdy, all. Be watching the chat for me tonight, and he's also going to be operating the random number generator for me a little later in the show. Uh, Mr. Jim Senecola. From, tell everybody what your uh, what your channel is, Jim. Uh, yes, uh, totally wood, totally wood workshop. Okay, totally wood workshop. He's joining us tonight, and we've also got one of my favorite Canadians, uh, Mr. Trevor Carr. Say hello, Trevor. Hey, everybody. And uh, we got a good crowd out there. Looks like we got about. Uh, well, according to that, it says 35 watching. I don't know if that's right or not, but uh, got some new folks out there in the chat, I noticed. Uh, I saw my good friend Marty Talver out there. I saw Dar Stella Bada out there in the chat. Welcome to some of the CNC nonsense. Um, <laughs> always, uh, always brings a few extra folks in when we do a giveaway. And we're going to talk about that just a little bit real quick. Um, and then I've got to show some project pictures that I tried to show last week and could not get the screen share to work at all for some reason. And y'all don't know this, but after I shot, you know, I was doing the show live from my garage out there with the laptop hardwired with a, cat five cable run down the hallway and out the door and after i shut all that down and came in here i thought well, why wasn't that work i turned on my desktop and it worked fine so i don't anticipate any problems so we're going to be showing those projects i've got even more because uh, some folks have sent me some other ones uh, so we're going to be doing that in a little bit but let's talk about this giveaway real quick uh, you know, I'm giving away a license plate guitar. And some of you folks, if, if this is your first time watching or whatever, you don't know what's going on, you might be asking yourself, now, why in the heck is this guy giving away a license plate guitar? And I tell you, I tell you why I decided to, to start giving away some of these things is when I started kind of getting back into building cigar box guitars and stuff like that, and, you know, I do these shows pretty much every Saturday. And I had mentioned, I think I was wanting to know if anybody had an old Indiana license plate because I'm originally from Indiana. Uh, always be a Hoosier at heart. But uh, anyway, uh, some folks says, yeah, I got some plates. I'll send them to you. And uh, I hope I don't get the names wrong, but I, I know Dwight Mitchell I'm sorry, not Dwight Mitchell. David Mitchell sent me a couple of um, Indiana plates. Uh, Dwight Bennett, I think. I got to check because I got everybody's name wrote down here. Yeah, Dwight Bennett sent me like 30-something Indiana plates. And so I, I did a, a build with – actually, I did a build – with a Georgia plate. And when I started posting pictures on social media, you know, right away people would see that and go, well, that's pretty cool. I've got some old plates out in the garage. Give me your address. I'll send them to you. And so the next thing you know, this whole thing kind of snowballed. And every time I would get license plates from somebody and I'd post them on social media, and somebody else would say, well, what about this state? You need this state. I got a bunch of them. I sent them to you. Uh, so I just started getting license plates out the yin yang. And, you know, I see he's out there in the chat. Oh, uh, where'd he go? Tom, uh, Tom Conway. He just went crazy. He, he sent me like 90, a box had 98 license plates. And it wasn't just 98 plates of Alaska. It was Washington, Utah, Nevada, Colorado, Montana, California, 
Alaska, Oregon, New Jersey, Wyoming, Arizona, Idaho, Massachusetts, Texas, Tennessee, blah, blah, blah. I mean, he, I don't know where he got all those things, but he sent me a bunch of them. But and a lot of other folks, a lot of, uh, you know, CNC folks um, have helped me accumulate all these license plates. So that's, this is part of my way of trying to give back a little is, you know, because I've got so many, I'll never be able to keep all of them. I mean, it's getting crowded back here. Now. <laughs> I've got 17 guitars in this office right here behind me. And Tom's asking you if you need two more. Uh, yeah, sure. Send them. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but yeah, so that, that's, that's why I'm doing this giveaway. I'm going to, and, and the cool thing is, and, and what, I'm, what I was planning on, like right now, I've currently got like six license plate guitars, but I thought that we would do the, the drawing tonight for this one. Now, notice this does have an Indiana license plate, but it there's nothing cut into this plate. It's just mounted with these four screws, and there is a single coil pickup it's hence the uh, volume and tone controls on top, but there's a single coil pickup right under here. This is a this is a you know pretty nice neck. It's uh, this is one of the necks I think I purchased this one. This was back when I first started doing these again. Now I make all my necks, but this is a uh, I purchased from Giddy Crafter Supply. It has uh, a white oak uh, neck with a Paduk or Paduk, if you want to mispronounce it, uh, fretboard, uh, sealed tuners. Uh, it's got my, my little uh, burnt <laughs> torch burn uh, finish, uh, and then just some spray lacquer on there. So uh, got a real kind of, I don't know if you can hear that, Got kind of a twangy, almost banjo-like sound to these things. But and I remember when I first got this one done, because it sounded so different than every other thing I'd built, I couldn't put it down. And I, I don't even play. I was just strumming around it. But it, I just the sound was just so unique. Uh, but anyway, what I was getting at, this plate, if if we do the drawing and for this uh, license plate guitar tonight, and you're not a big fan of Indiana, you can go to my website and I have a picture of all the plates everybody sent me. And if you want to pick out a different plate, I can actually swap out the plate. Uh, because like I said, this is a floating bridge. I can just move this, take those four screws out, pull it out, pop another one in, set the bridge back up and retune it. And we're good to go. So if anybody... You know, you win it and you want, you know, say, um, I don't know, Mississippi played or whatever. I think I got one of those. That might be one of the states I don't have. I don't know. Since I said that. Nope, I do have a Mississippi. But, yeah, I, I, all the all these people that have been sending me plates, uh, you know, I got to thank you again because without this, I, I wouldn't be able to do it. Uh <clears throat> I, but I just checked a while ago. There's only like 15 states out of the 50 that I don't have. And I still got people out there that are hunting for, you know, they go, well, what, what do you need? And I, I give them a list of the ones I don't have on there and they're constantly hunting. So uh, only 15 to go. But my goal was once I started doing this and all these people started sending me plates, I'm like, well, I'm going to set kind of a personal goal to try to build one of these guitars from all 50 states. So, I got 35, 35 of them uh, already, so um, we'll uh, we might make it if I can get get some plates. But uh, all right, let's. Uh, how about we do a roll call out there, Javi? You up for that? Did I wake him up? You're muted, Javi. <laughs> He's, talk, he's talking well, to that, him. That would, that would be a problem, but absolutely, we're up for roll call. Uh, yeah. Tom Conway, Alex Chiron is out there, Dar Stellaboda, 
uh, Ed Newman, Harold Stuckey, Hollis Fenn, Jerry Brown, Rob Schuster, Steve Hinton, Trevor Carter. I know I saw, let's see, Jerry Brown. I saw uh, Dave uh, Jones is out there, Portal Woodworks. Uh, Troy Pritchard, Keith Painter. Uh, apologize if I say your name twice. Steve uh, Nealon from Harneal Media is out there. David Mitchell, Greg Hamilton, Brenda Hickey, Franklin Woodworks, and uh, Trevor, Jim, and myself. All right. And John, John Withrow, Del Ludlam. The, the hits keep coming. Yeah, they just keep coming. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Um, we'll be doing the drawing uh, for the license plate guitar here in just a little bit. Um, but first, I've got to show, and I'm over here scratching my dog. Uh, Jack's over here trying to photo bomb. Him and Rocky both come in here. Um, I'm going to do a screen share and show some of these project photos that I've tried to show last week. And we'll go through those real quick. And uh, also, Javi, if anybody's got any kind of questions of any kind, CNC yep. or guitar related or just yep, I'm that, scanning. I'm scanning uh, for questions. Keep an eye on that because I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do the screen share. And yeah, if, if anybody has any questions, go ahead and put them out there, and uh, and I will put them in the queue. All right, I'm going to present myself and do the screen share. Well, don't tell me it's not going to work again. It asked about that. Uh, you put presenting, but not screen share. It's doing the same thing that it was doing on the laptop. Yeah. There. I don't understand that. But yet, when I came in after the show... Um, hey, Dave. Yeah. A little message flashed up that says, Dave is no longer presenting. Okay. Yeah, he... I'll turn that back off, but... Okay, I'm presenting. Okay, you're presenting uh, the green uh, green arrow on the left for screen share. See, it pops up, but then when you go to click the the final, you know, it pops up and says it's wanting you to share. Do you have to lock on yourself? Well, I don't think it matters. I wanted it to lock on so that when I'm screen sharing, it doesn't bounce around. Uh. I'm going to, i tell you what, guys, I'm going to leave and come back. Okie doke. So I will be back. I'll be, take over and entertain for a couple of seconds here. You got it. Yeah, where's my top hat? Uh, so, uh, so Trevor, the subject uh, earlier, uh, we were chatting about cutting aluminum. Yeah. Uh, for for those of you interested in uh, cutting aluminum with your CNC, it's uh, it's uh, it's fun. Well, now uh, I have another issue. Well, now you can't. Now you can't. Every time I try to hang up, I don't click the stop broadcast button, but I try to do leave this call. Right. It comes up and it says you're currently broadcasting. Exiting this hangout on air will also stop this broadcast. Do you want to exit your broadcast? Ooh, I put continue broadcast, but then it just comes right back here and it won't let won't let me leave. Hmm. So I, let me I know wonder if you good idea I, one. I wonder if you just unplug yourself. What'll happen? Uh, let's see. Well, I hate that. I hate to mess it up and then it, it wipe out the the broadcast because everybody's. Everybody's here waiting. Well, uh, let me let me see if I can open up a second one. Yeah. Just to see if that will work. Are you are you just trying to open up some pictures of show and tell type of stuff, Dave? Yeah. Maybe send the. Uh, maybe you send, want to send the them to me. I'll be happy to show yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see what this does. It's not a whole batch of them. Yeah. Try try this. Try screen sharing first. 
uh, before you click present. I don't know if that might might make a difference. Try to do what? Uh, 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 take yourself off presenting and go to screen share first. Uh, and well, then I did, I did that just a minute. Oh, okay. okay. Am I? Uh... You are still presenting, I believe. No. Uh, I don't. Uh, hang on a second. Man, this is crazy. Jerry Brown says that you got to open another computer and join broadcasting might be the issue. Open another computer and join broadcasting. Well, I've got the laptop here, but I don't know what's going on. I'm going to uh, let's obviously if you can screen share. Oh, yeah, all right. Give it a shot. And. Yep, I'm and, screen sharing Jim and Trevor and the gang. Not a problem. Okay. Well, let me send you that folder. Sure. And, well, I don't know what the heck is going on with this. Why it doesn't want me to. Uh, this project show is cursed. <laughs> Where is it? I know every every once in a while I get mixed up because I'm on so many different types of Hangouts, Hangouts on Air, and then regular Google Hangouts, and now with the new Meet and Chat coming up, uh, all it's right. uh, so I've got to open things. my email again. I apologize, folks, out there in the chat. This is uh, this is not supposed to happen because I do this all the time on live shows, and it always works. And I thought last week was a fluke because I was out there in, in the shop with, uh, using a laptop instead of my regular desktop, but it's... Uh, I think that's the only reason why it is acting up is because you are live. That's the only time that it ever messes up. Yeah. So anyway, we've got some... I, I guarantee you, folks, when we get to them, we've got some good project photos to show. All right, let's see here. Going to send it to me through messenger or email? Uh, email. All righty. Let's see here. Nothing like a live show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we gotta find that during folder again. We could do a live show and tell while you're doing that. Jim's got a nice guitar sitting right next to him. Okay, yeah. Okay, here here we go. Go ahead and go ahead and show that uh, your ukulele there. Uh, lock it on him. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. There we go. Tell us a little bit about that, Jim, while, while I'm fumbling yeah. around here trying to get this other to work. Well, I'm not at home, and so my son's watching my house, and he had mentioned that he would like to learn how to play ukulele. So uh, CB Giddy had a special on Father's Day, and 20% off, I ended up getting this uh, ukulele kit from them. Uh, it has uh, Pizio uh, in it, and I'm going to uh, build a little amplifier, and uh, Shane Steele also has a preamp that I'm going to also build to help clean up any uh, Pizio noise. So uh, This took me about two days to build. The neck was... Uh, all I had to do was sand it, and uh, other than that, it went together pretty easy. And what kind of what kind of strings do you use on that? Is there are, there, are they nylon strings? Yeah, they're nylon polyamp. There's some nylon. They're nylon strings. Uh, Dave, uh, uh, Steve Nealon was saying to check your toolbox app. Make sure that the 
that that's not what is what's messed up in in Hangouts. Okay, I'm just running into all kinds of problems. I tried to create a zip file and send it, and it says it's too big. It won't send it. So I'm like, oh. All right, I don't know what I'm going to go. Okay, let me. Um... What in the world did I spill on my desk? It looks like sugar, but. Okay, so go to the toolbox, it says. Yeah, go, uh, let's see. Uh, follow along with you here. Uh, so you, all I have is... Yeah, I don't have the toolbox. All I have is, all right, now you have chat and... I and have screen cameraman, screen. screen share, and the chat. That's all I have. Click, click on screen share and what pops up. Oh, you take it off to me, though. <laughs> yeah, it's the, well, the screen. It says the entire screen, right? I mean, it gives you that option? Yeah, yeah. And when you choose it and then click share, what happens? Nothing. The, the, uh, the share button doesn't, it's faded out. Uh, you have to choose the the screen itself. Did you click on the screen? On, oh, on the wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, hold on. Here we go. There you go. Oh, okay. <laughs> now then. <laughs> Sorry for all that, folks. Now, now lock it on yourself in presenting mode. Okay. Let me come back to. Uh... Easy. Yeah, come on. Okay. Now, everybody can see my screen? Yes. All right. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Here are uh, the project photos. And I'm going to start here with Dave Matthews. Uh, he sent me uh, this email. And these are all from, like, last week, too. Uh, so I apologize for not getting to show them last week. But this is a quilting ruler a quilting machine ruler down with quarter inch leg sand and i have no idea how that's used or anything about it but i'm gonna take his word for it that that's what it is so nicely done i'm assuming he used his uh maybe a drag bit or something to put those that grid on there. I think he's out in the chat. Dave's first show. Yeah, you th you think so, wouldn't you? Don't even know how to work anything. <laughs> I just don't remember having to select that before. I thought it was automatically by default the entire screen. But oh well, it's all good now. Um, let me go up here to let's see who have I got next here. Uh, let's do uh, let's do James Long next. He sent a few photos in. This looks like a three D carve. Cool. There's the eagle. That looks like the that might be the one that comes in vectric. I'm not sure. It looks like it. Good nice guy paint though. I like how those guys can paint them. Yeah. I'm, I've never had I'm, any luck doing that. I'm not a painter. I don't like painting. That looks great, too. Yeah. All right. Nice job there, James. Thank you for sending those in. Uh, next, I'm going to do, let's go down here and check out what Rob Schuster sent. I remember his email. All it said was, Badges, badges, and more badges, I think. Is what it <laughs> so this is some uh, nice working. Rob, if you're, yeah, Rob's out there. Uh, what size is this one? Just because I don't see anything laying beside it to give us a reference for the size. <clears throat> and that's oak too, right? It looks like oak. 
Yeah, it looks like oak. Yeah. Some nice green to that. Okay. Let's see, twenty-four inches tall. Yeah, I thought I thought maybe that was big. That's uh, that's a big one. And he did confirm that it's oak. It's uh, some more oak looks like. Um, Rob does some really really good work. And I might mention that Rob is, uh, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Rob, but you're still using the shoestring budget type CNC, right? Okay. Yeah, those are all very nice. Well done, Rob. Is that, is that black paint? I wonder that he's got behind there, or is it more of a stain? Or a, uh, what am I trying to think of? Not a stain, but a, a dye. Mm, I'm going to guess paint. Yeah. Okay. Maybe Rob will uh, chime in here. Yes, black paint, he says. Mm -hmm. So we must not have too much of a lag as far as... Uh, the chat goes. No, not too much. Yeah, I think Dar's asking Javi, how do you get your channel link in the chat handle? I think uh, he, he see he's got a little wrench by his name. He's one of the moderators, so he can post links, and I don't think it'll let anybody else post them. Correct. And that's that's a YouTube chat thing because if you if you didn't have that, everybody would be spamming with with their own links and stuff. Yeah. All right, well done, Rob. Now let's see who we got left here. Rob, she's, I'm going to do Dell Ludlam next, and he sent a email. I can find it. There it is. It says. Uh, Yes, yeah, I have three small projects to send you this time. Numbers one, two. Let me go ahead and get them up here. One, two, three, and four are of a small table to set a piece of art on. The table measures 12 and a half tall by 12 inches diameter. It has a 3D weave on the top and is of maple. The skirt is made using bending plywood and veneered in bird's eye maple. The leg, that'd, be a, that'd be a neat process to see. Yeah. yeah the, uh, the legs are poplar and made with the aid of the bandsaw and router table. CNC bits used are a half inch end mill and a 1 16th ball nose to pocket and a 1 8th ball nose for the weave pattern. He used VCAR Pro and had it put a vector around the weave to get the pockets. Used a 60 degree V bit for the signature and a quarter inch end mill for the penny pocket. All right, so let me, that, this is a one through four. So this is one. It looks like he's got some stain or something on it there. Or this yeah, is, nice. yeah, this is just showing the different uh, finishing pictures, I guess. That looks pretty sweet right there. Yeah. And there's his uh, brand, or I, I, it looks like that might be a little V-carve that he's done there. Doesn't look like a, doesn't look like it's burning. I don't think it is. Okay, let's see. Yeah. Let's see, number five is a plaque I've been working on for a while. Uh, there are many elements from many places. Use stack text techniques along with layers to put it all together. Two bits were used, a 60-degree V-bit and a quarter-inch upcut end mill. Material is Sapili veneer on MDF. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, this is a trial run to see how it would look in the finish. I need to make some adjustments in this project. All right. So that, uh, I think that looks pretty good. 
Mm -hmm. Really nice. Uh, number six is, the, let's see, number six is some of the name tags I've been making for some of the CB Swarms and the Corvette Club. Wood is one eighth inch maple, and I use a 60 degree V bit and one eighth inch end mill. Finishing is with lacquer based stains. They are fast drying, he says, and deft satin or semi gloss lacquer. Artist paid from Hobby Lobby yeah. work for me, he says. So, and you can get a reference of the size there because he's got a quarter set next to it. So they're pretty small little tags there. And that deft is good stuff. That's the kind of lacquer I use. So. It is. I love that stuff. Yeah, that's good stuff. Um, let's see here. He says, I use a portable spray booth. Let me see if there's another. Oh, okay, well, here's his Gatton uh, or his uh, setup here. Uh, it says, I use a portable spray booth to finish in. It's a little tight to spray in with me in there. I bet it is because Dale's a big guy. I've, I've met him in at the uh, meetup in Texas. He's a he's a big fella. I don't know how he gets in those Corvettes. I swear. I don't. Uh, <laughs> but uh, he says yeah, it's a little tight, a little tight to spray in with me in there. I bought it from Rockler and it works. They have a larger size. Let's see if he's got a picture. Ah, there it is. Yeah, there's the spray. Um, what do they call it? Spray shelter, I guess. Okay. And then let me go back. He says there's three picks. This is his setup. Uh, and he's got a nice one here. Um, kind of, obviously, you can see there's some some heavy modifications done on this thing. And, but he's got a nice, uh, nice setup. There's his control station and it's enclosed looks like too so pretty cool oh i like how that folds up i was just going to say in the engraving on that or the laser whatever it is that he did that looks really good too yeah yeah awesome okay uh thank you very much dale for sending those in sorry i'm a little late getting to the show them uh let's go now finally i think we've got just one left and i saved this guy for last because he sent quite a few pictures uh let me get the uh let's see what his email he sent with it all right let's start right here i think it says carved horse is for our granddaughter's new bed about 20 inches long nice Cat sign is about 36 inches tall overall. That's pretty cool. A little text on text there, looks like. I like it. <laughs> uh, inlay cutting board is about 9 by 13, he said. That's this number three picture. I hope it's all going in the right order here. Yeah, it looks like, yeah, the mouse inlay cutting board. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, so that's an inlay. Uh, dog Memorial is about 10 to 12 inches tall. Nicely done. Uh, let's see what we got here. Right, there's a picture of his, um, his getting, okay, yeah, here it says, his Gatton setup will cut 50 inches wide by 36 deep. You will notice I did the side rails like we discussed. Um, opposite of the way you designed for the plywood strip, so I didn't lose the Z treble height. Okay. Yeah, so he's got, the, instead of having that little strip underneath the table, like in the design, he set it up on top. And then put the other piece of angle under the table. Yep. Okay. Um, looks like he's running the Porter cable. Maybe a 690 or something on that. Okay. This is a Sally Mae grave marker for a neighbor's dog. This is one that's being cut. Obviously, a 
3D finishing pass going on there. Sally May, grave marker for neighbor's dog being cut further along in the process. And then there it is. Nice. Completed. Nicely done. <clears throat> Nicely done. Here's a nice uh, stack tick sign, about 24 inches long. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And we've got some trivets made out of sinker wood, about 300 years old. Wow. That's interesting. And then we've got an urn made for his daughter's dog. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Let's see, he didn't say... He didn't say that, what, what size it is. Is that lasered or is that curved? Um, Looks kind of like lasered, huh? Let's see if we can get, oops. Yeah, I think it's carved. I think he's out there, I think. Uh, Gary, is that right here what we're looking at? Is that? Hand burned, he says. Okay. Oh, nice. Even better. Yeah, even better. Wow. Very, very nice. Impressive. And then the top of the urn we made for my sister-in-law, his wife's sister. So, where did that button go? I guess it won't do it. No. There we go. All right, very nice. Okay. And he says here his wife does all the design work and then he does the machining. Now, Gary, when, when you say design work, does that mean she just draws it and you program it or does she program it as well? All right, I think that was all of the. Uh, that was all of the photos. So I'm, I'm glad somebody showed me how to work this <laughs> stupid stretch. <laughs> I swear I, I don't remember having to do that before, but I'm old and forgetful. So that happens. It's, it's because I, when that, the that's... screen pops up, I'm looking at it right now. And when you when it pops up, it says your entire screen, and it's in blue, and in the other part, application window, is faded out. So that's why I thought, well, it's already there, but when you click on that, yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah, you have to, yeah, you got to click on it. It's, uh, and, and the thing is, like I was saying, I, I've, I'm on different Hangouts all the time, and, and with you on private Hangouts, and it's a completely different uh set up an arrangement set yeah. of tools so. yeah but you know as many times as i've done that on the show you think i've had that much trouble i've really folks out there in chat i really have done this before <laughs> i know it doesn't no it doesn't uh, seem like it watching tonight but yeah gary says she programs meaning his wife uh, she programs and gives me a thumb drive so wow you got the easy part you just push that little magic button and sit back and, and let it go. <laughs> that that magic button that everybody thinks we have when we have a yeah. <laughs> yeah I love that beautiful. magic button. <laughs> All right. Uh, was there any questions out there? Uh, I let's see. Uh, all missed. the questions were directed toward the people, and they were answering them as as we were going along. So. At the moment, I don't see any. I did see a, a comment a while ago. I'm sure it's long since passed that I think Frankie CNC and Woodworking said he had bought a laser. Very cool. Hey, here's one from Landis Shoots. He says, does your new laser that you just did the video on run as good as the tech? I have used mine for eight hour burns with no problem. All right, so he's asking about my, my new one. Yeah, does the new one run as long as the uh, JTAC? I, I would assume. 
You well, said it run for eight hours. I have well, I have no reason to doubt that it that it won't do that. You know, I don't think it's going to be a problem. But I just I when I shot that release that video yesterday about nine o'clock. That's all I have done, and I didn't even get out there today. But I'm going to be putting that thing through its paces, and um, you know, all some of you uh, CBG folks out there know that I I use that laser to make custom fret boards and engrave stuff like that on boxes and and all that kind of stuff. So I'll be doing a bunch of that, and uh, I tell you, like I said, all I've done is run a few kind of test things, you know lasering text and stuff like that. But it's every bit as good a quality as what I was getting out of my JTEC. Just, and all I did, I had to focus it a little bit. Uh, I, I ran like, I ran, you know, my piece of cardboard said laser test, and I ran it three times. And in between each time, I would either raise and lower the Z to, and then I would uh, actually turn the, the little dial down there at the at the lens because you can focus it that way and it's it's got the detail and all just as good as the other one what's the uh, uh what's the height that you're price, so. what's what was the last height that you were running it at do you remember is it remotely close to the jtec as far as uh i think i'm running it a little closer because uh, i i've been running my jtec around three inches uh, and I think I'm running this probably a couple of inches, inch and three quarters, something like that. Um, yeah, it's probably a, it's probably a couple of inches. But um, anyhow, yeah, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna make me a separate. I got a you know I got a fixture that I use for those fretboards, but I I keep it kind of permanently mounted on my machine out there. And since I got it set perfect, I didn't want to move it. So I'm probably just going to cut me another one uh, for this machine around here. But yeah, I'm going to uh, going to be running a bunch of fretboards and stuff. Marty, thank you so much for your uh, compliment there. In fact, when you posted those pictures, uh, I guess on the the main main made CBGs or whatever. Yeah, I think that's the name of that page. Uh, uh, shoot, what's that guy's name? Steve Richard. I was going. I knew he had two first names. I couldn't remember it was Richard Steve or Steve Richards or what. Yeah, Steve <laughs> Richard. He uh, he wanted some of those uh, fretboards. So anybody out there that that's, wants some of those things, I can make them. Uh, you know, with this laser, if you can think it, I can draw it and put it on there, I, you know, it engraves the, it lays out the fret lines. And of course I can do any, any scale length you want, want. Uh, I think, uh, I think Steve wanted 25 and a half inch. I got it wrote down somewhere. Um, but anything, anything you want, no matter how crazy it might seem, uh, I can put as, as fret markers. Uh, Marty being up there in Maine, I did um, the lobsters. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I think they look cool. Uh, they, they do, they do. But uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Hey Dave, here's another question for you. Uh, Franklin Woodworks wants to know: Have you ever done a six-string guitar? Well, not a, uh, not probably like what Rob's thinking about. But I have done. Uh, I called it the pallet caster because I took a bunch of pallet wood that I had left over from one of those pallet challenges and just built a box. And then I, um, and I didn't even, I didn't build the neck. I, I you know, cause the necks for a six string, you can get like a telly or a strat neck or whatever, uh, for about 35, 40 bucks off of Amazon. So I bought one of those, but and then bought all the other stuff to make a telly and put it in that and called it my pallet caster but i, I do have a couple of uh telecaster type bodies i guess you're supposed to say t-type they don't like it when you try to copy their stuff <laughs> but uh, i have a couple of bodies that are already done 
Um, and I still got a couple of necks. In fact, I got one left-handed and one right-handed telly neck in there. So I'll do another six string, um, probably sometime. Let's see here. All right. Well, what, how are we doing on time? We probably, yeah, we're getting close to nine o'clock. Yeah, we might as well yeah, give we a guitar. Plenty right? of time. Mm -hmm. uh, is everybody out there? What do we got? We got 80, 81 folks watching. Everybody out there ready for us to do the drawing? <clears throat> he wants to wait a while. <laughs> <laughs> it's a loaded question, isn't it? Yeah, we can uh, go ahead. Before we do, I want to go kind of go over the rules for the drawing just to make sure everybody knows how all this works. I'm doing this the same way. You know, I'd give away CNCs and all kinds of stuff on this show before. Uh, give it, Jerry says give it another three minutes. All right, I can talk for that long, Jerry. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, you know, I always do it the same way. Um, I have a, you know, as y'all that have entered, you know, I have um, a little link that'll take you straight to a little form you fill out, and then it makes it easy because when I get them in the email, I just copy it and then paste it into a spreadsheet. And so you're in whatever sale number, um, you know, you happen to fall in. And for tonight, we had um, 96 entries. So we're going to do a random number generator. Javi's going to do that for me. Uh, so yeah. I'll, uh, so I don't, I don't have to do that. All set up. Uh, so he'll pick and use a random number generator to pick a number between one and ninety-six, and then whatever number that is, I'll go look on the spreadsheet, um, and whoever that is um, will announce that name. And you have to be watching the show to win. So that's that's the catch, you know. Um, you know right away we've got 81 folks, well, 80 now by my count or YouTube's count watching, and I've got 96 entries. So you already know there's somebody that's entered that's not watching. And, you know, that to me that's what makes the drawings fun is you've got to be live because we've I've given away CNCs before and people would enter and then don't watch. And we've gone through – I think the first time I gave away a CNC, we had to draw like five different names before we finally got somebody that was out there. So we, you know, there's a little bit of lag from the time. In fact, I, I'm going to check and see what the lag is here. I'm just got a timer. Are you going to do a timer for these ones, Steve? Uh, yeah. Would you like to handle that task for me, Trevor, or do you want me to? No, I can do it for you. Okay. Well, what I want to do is I'm going to set a timer real quick here just to see uh, what the uh, what the lag time is. So, uh, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna wave. Okay. So I started my timer, and now as I look over here, I can see when I do that wave. Okay, so there's only about a 12 second lag from the time yeah. I'm saying something to the time it shows up over there on YouTube. At least for me, I don't know. It might be yeah, same same here. I counted about 12 seconds. Okay, uh, but we'll probably do. Uh, I don't know. I think probably counting, figuring for the lag. I think if we do like 90 seconds or a minute and a half. That should be plenty of time because, like I said, if you're out there watching, you're right there. So all you got to do is type in the chat. Um, you know, we'll be watching for it and we'll see it. And you got 90 seconds. Once the, you know, now if you're cheating and you got you you got somebody else watching for you and then they hear your name and they call you and say, hey, get on there, blah, blah, blah. You know, if you if you say, hey, I'm here, but the, the, the phone has gone off, 
that's you know we got we got to have a rule somewhere. So ninety seconds, I think, is plenty of time. Um, usually, in past giveaways, when they're there, they're there, and they reply really quick. So anyway, so that's the rules. You gotta you gotta fill out the entry form. Uh, it's also for just people in the U.S. You know, we're doing license plate guitars that are, you know, the plates from the U.S. Uh, state. So it's uh, we may end up doing. You know, this this has gone pretty good. Uh, you know, it's been a lot of uh, positive response as far as people entering and stuff. So you know, who knows? Maybe I'll do one and do it international. But this particular drawing right here is just for. Uh, the U.S. Um, and you got to be watching live. That's that's pretty much just the rule. So, like I said, so when we do the random drawing, uh, Javi will, will tell me the number, and once I call out the name, uh, Trevor, if you're going to work the clock for me, All yep. right. All right. I'm just setting my phone up now. Okay. Uh, and you got it. We're gonna make some annoying alarm when it, when yeah. it hits the end. <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll set it now while you're talking and that way there if, when it goes off we can make sure everything works okay yeah so um, so that's how it works so any questions about how the, how the random drawing works these are a lot of fun I, I, like I said I, this is my first time to give away a guitar on here but I give away CNC's and uh, CNC kits and all kinds of stuff before and I always do them the same way and, and um to me, it's just a lot of fun to, to have it where you got to be watching live. Um, I, I've told this story before. Some of you guys that have known me a long time probably are tired of hearing it. But one reason why I love doing these kind of drawings this way is, uh, let's see, it's been seven years ago now. I was at a EMC uh, business meeting, and they have a, a – thing once a year where they have a, a business meeting and um, it's an, an electric uh, EMC is a you know power membership thing a power company and anyway they every year they retire a vehicle from their fleet and that's their grand prize and they give away all kinds of stuff they give away like microwaves and fans and toasters and you name it anyway uh you go in you sign in and you know because you got to be a, a member of emc and where i live i have snap and shoals emc for my power and you, you sign in you get a little number and they do the business meeting and as soon as the business meeting's over they get a kid up out of the audience and he comes up and he reaches into the barrel and he draws a number and he hands it to the guy and he sticks it in his pocket well that's the winner of their vehicle that they're retiring from their fleet well then they go through and they spend another probably hour hour and a half and by the way this is in july outdoors in an arena so it's like hot sticky it's miserable <laughs> but anyway they give away all these prizes and at the very end that guy will pull that ticket out and rattle off the number to see who wins that vehicle and this particular year in 2012, it was a, a 2003 Ford F-250 Super Duty that they were giving away. They cleaned it all up. It was looking good. And they called out the number, and everybody's looking at their ticket, and they're like, oh, you know, and they get up, and they all start leaving. Well, I just sat there, and, and another guy and his wife was sitting next to me, and he looked, and he says, well, is that it? And I, I said, nope. I said, that's not it. I said, if those people have already left, they're going to draw another one. So sure enough, they waited about five minutes. And I don't even remember who the name was. I don't know if they even said the name. Uh, but anyway, that person had already got fed up with the heat and left. Well, guess whose number they drew the second time? <laughs> um, and that truck still sitting out there in my driveway. I love that thing. So. Yeah, so that's why I love to do these drawings live where you got to be there, got to be watching live to win. They're a lot of fun, and it, uh, 
makes it a whole lot interesting. Okay, we got 85 now, so that means we still got a few people that probably entered that aren't watching. So I guess we need to go ahead and, and uh, get this party started, huh? Uh, uh, Jerry said give it another three minutes, but that was probably 10 minutes ago, so I think we're probably good. Uh, Trevor, are you ready with the uh, – I'm all set, buddy. Okay, as soon as I, you know, because Hobby's going to do the number and then he'll tell me and then I will announce the name. And as soon as I say the name, start the clock. They got 90 seconds. And when it goes off, it goes off. We'll move on and do another one. Sounds good. And who knows? Maybe we'll get, luck, maybe we'll get it on the first try here. All right, Javi, so you, you're going to screen share? and are you Absolutely. As soon as I hit that generate. Are you ready, guys? Ready. Uh, here we go. 62. The number is 62, Dave. Okay. 62 is... Well, I'll be dog. 62 is Marty Tauber from Biddeford, Maine. <clears throat> So, Marty Tauber, you have 90 seconds to reply. <laughs> I know he's out. There he is, Marty Tauber. I knew he was out there because I've been talking to him a while ago. <laughs> Congratulations, Marty. <laughs> that is awesome. All right, Marty, so you'll have to uh, – You'll have to let me know here. Let me get back on my uh, thing here. You'll have to let me know if you want to want me to swap this plate out for uh, a different plate. You know, you can you can check out all the plates I've got, and as you well know, I have three main plates because you sent, you sent them to me. So, <laughs> congratulations to Marty. Uh, on winning the first giveaway. And I say first because we're probably <laughs> going to do this again. You know, that's John, I, John Fisher says the second one is for your truck. <laughs> the second giveaway is for my truck. Uh, <laughs> I tell you, I love that old truck. It's uh, like I said, it's a, it's an F two fifty super D it's got an eight foot bed. So when I go to get plywood and stuff, I don't even have to, you know, prop it up on the tailgate, nothing. It'll all fit in there. I love that thing. So I, we got Hollis Finn out there. Hey, Hollis, how you doing? Um, oh, absolutely. Mari Tarver says Mississippi. I think I've got. There go my dogs trying to show out here. I've got Mississippi checked off. Let me see how many of those I have because I have I think if I remember right Sean Stone sent me yeah I think I've just got one Mississippi in fact now that I know how to do a screen share <laughs> let, me, uh, let me do it again before I forget you should be able to do that in at least one Mississippi Ah, oh, you're you're a funny guy. <laughs> All right, I'm going to screen share, and then I'm going to go to. Oh, uh, let's see. Let's do a new window. Okay, let's put. Um, you think I'd have this bookmark? Yeah, if you come over here to my, where it says Dave's Guitar Stuff and click right on the Dave's Guitar Stuff, you'll see where I've done pictures and I've listed names to thank people. But I've got all these. Um, it takes them a while to load because there's so darn many of them. But I've got all the pictures of all the license plates. Um, yeah, everybody's saying, yeah, let's do another one for a CNC. 
<laughs> ah, you people. Okay, yeah, here's the uh, – there's the plate. Is that the one you want, Marty? That was uh, that was a uh, personalized plate. Uh, Sean Stone, when he got ready to send me those, he goes, I had one that's, that's one of those vanity plates. He goes, you want those? I'm like, sure, whatever you got. So that'll uh, – <laughs> that'll make it that'll make a good uh license plate with some of those fretboards i just sent you <laughs> he knows he knows the ones <laughs> i'm talking about too <laughs> all right and we're back all right so i've seen uh I've seen some folks out there uh, saying they got lasers. Who all who all out there in the chat bought lasers and what kind did you get? Matt Willie says I was wondering if you made a steel or aluminum C CNC. Uh, yeah, I make a steel CNC. It's uh, the Garage Works. Go to uh, www.garageworkscnc.com and um, you'll see what I'm talking about. They're safety orange. You can't miss them. Uh, do the emboss plates sound different from the flat ones? Uh, That's a good question. I well, uh, here's the thing. Um, you know, this one here that I just that we just gave away tonight. This is a flat plate, and it's it's got like I said to me, it's got, got that kind of banjo twang to it. Now, one of these other ones here, like for example, here's a North Carolina, and it's got the the raised letters. And it doesn't sound that much different to me. But what I had to do was make a, on a floating bridge, you can see how I kind of put legs so it would straddle the, the raised numbers. And I've also found out that all states don't have the same size letters and numbers. Some of them are, Hawaii's are like super big. So I got to make a special one for those. Yeah. But yeah, it's it it sounds it, it doesn't sound that much different to me. Uh, but what does sound different is, like for example, this one that I did here, where I put a fixed bridge uh, or the hardtail bridge and cut into it, put a thing. See, it doesn't sound at all like those. It sounds more like a regular guitar because. It's got stuff under here, kind of, you know, because you're screwing this into it. So it kind of keeps the plate from resonating as much. So after I built this one, I thought, I thought this was the first one I made. And I'm like, I'm never cutting another plate. I'll always use the floating bridge. I use the, uh, I don't think I showed it, but these I cut on my CNC. These, you know, I make them a three and four string. So that goes into the body, the floating bridge. So there's nothing on the plate and they, they, they just got a, a much better sound to it. So after I did that first one, I thought I won't, I won't ever cut another plate. I'll always put, even though I'm going to, you know, put a pickup or a piezo or whatever in them, I'll put it underneath. Uh, all of those other ones have a, uh, a piezo hot glued to the underneath side of the plate. Yeah, Marty, I, I'm, I'm anxious to get those wicked buckers because I know that one that Rusty did where he put a, a wicked bucker under it um, sounded awesome. The only thing is I hate I hate having to waste a wicked bucker but putting it on something where you can't see it. Um, in case, just so people uh, know, let me give you a plug, Marty. Uh, this is what he's talking about. This is a Wicked Bucker pickup, Mark, Marty Tauber. 
makes those itself. Uh, I put a little trim ring around this one, but uh, those are awesome pickups. Uh, Rob Schuster's got a laser question. He says, uh, how many inputs from the Bob does it take for a laser? Just really just one, the pin, and then wherever you put your ground. You know, when you're doing, you know with how it is with those bobs, I got that one little tiny spot for a ground. And then, you know, you're trying to put, you know, homing switches and a touch plate and e-stop and now a laser. You can't fit all those wires into that one thing. So what I do is I take a wire from the ground of the bob and run it to one of those terminal blocks and then use those uh, little loop things and make me like a almost like a bus bar type thing so dave the the laser doesn't have any tiny cooling fans or anything that it needs constant five volts for uh well it's got a little tiny fan you haven't watched my video have you well, i haven't <laughs> bought a laser i i have a monstrous laser machine. you just told on yourself you haven't watched my video no i have no this this new unit is really <laughs> neat because it's got the the diode laser encased in that aluminum heat sink. And then right on top of that is a little tiny fan, the same size square as that aluminum. And then on top of that, on standoffs a little bit, is the little driver board or PC board or whatever it is. So it's a really compact unit. You know, you don't have like the JTEC, you know how it's got the, the laser separate and then you've got that other little board thing. You got to mount it someplace. I like this because right. it's all one piece, plug the wire in, and all you got to worry about is running your wire. Really. Uh, so, so it doesn't need a constant five volt volts for the, for for anything, or does it? Well, yeah, but it's, it, you know, it's getting the it's getting the twelve volts from your power supply, or, or twelve volt rather. Okay, yeah. gotcha. And I'm assuming it's taking whatever off of that to run oh it. that's right that's right that's right he was asking about the breakout board and these don't go to the breakout board now does the uh does the fan constantly spin or only when the laser itself is turned on i th uh no it only it only turns on oh no i know what you're saying it turns on when you've got the power supply on it's going to run at least as far as i can tell because i could hear it running and it only went off when I turned the power supply off. Okay. So as long as you got, even though the laser itself isn't on, you know, the beam isn't on, it's it's still running that fan. And I suppose the the laser would turn and on uh, would turn on and off with the PWM as opposed to yeah. Never mind. <laughs> I had something else in my brain that just wasn't thinking right. Yeah. Let's see if I missed any other thing here i haven't seen any he was uh mentioning yeah you mentioned about rusty taylor and the wicked bucker under the plate um yeah now marty he does make them i forgot that he he makes them without the cover so that would be the way to do it i guess on these license plate bills I just, uh, you know, when I build something and put a, a Wicked Bucker on, I just want people to know it's a Marty Tobble Wicked Bucker because those things sound so awesome. And it's fun to say. Yeah. I mean, it's, what I say, how you say it, Marty? It's Wicked wicked Good or something like that. I forget what his little sticker says. I got one of his cards right here in front of me. But it, it, it like rolls. It's a Marty Tobber Wicked yeah. Bucket. It's, wicked, it's, it's, wicked Good. Wicked Bucker. <laughs> yeah. I, th I think you cost Amazon to sell out. Well, I hope I did, and I hope that they all use that affiliate link. <laughs> That's why I put them on there is that, you know, hopefully that if people decide they want to buy it, they'll click on that link. And, you know, it doesn't cost them any more money, but, you know, at least then I get a little nickel or dime for sending them over there uh, instead of Jeff Bezos. Uh, 
All right. Well, I guess uh, we've dropped off a little bit. We still got 79 folks watching. Yeah. Um, we're, uh, yeah, it's a little after nine. We, I know we started late. We'll take a few more questions if anybody's got them. Uh, Todd says he's got a DeWalt line laser. <laughs> hey, that counts. Uh, Sam Bond said, I ordered yesterday the same one you did the video on. Uh, you're going to like it, Sam. You're going to like it. You know, I got to tell you, you know, especially, you know, because we've done shows talking about lasers before. And, you know, of course, the JTEC 2.8 watt laser that I have that I bought like, I don't know, two or three years ago now, I guess. I think it's still right at the same price, which is right around 350 bucks, I think, uh, for, for the 2.8 watt. And then when I, you know, when, I, when we've done the show and I've talked about other companies and, you know, I always see OPT uh, and endurance laser, but those are like even way more than JTEC. Well, except for the endurance, I think, because it was like a kit. You had to put it all together yourself. Um, but, but yeah, the OPT was a lot more than, than JTEC and stuff. So, you know, you figure it at over $300. And then when I saw this and I'm like, wait a minute, 3.5 watt and it's only $89, you know, the, the, right away, red flags go up for me. And, but I read some of the reviews. There wasn't a whole lot of reviews. Uh, but I thought, you know, I got to looking at it and I thought, well, you know what? 90 bucks, you know, less than 100 bucks. I'll take a chance because if I'm buying, you know, I'm buying it through Amazon. I know a lot of folks on the Facebook group said they bought it through eBay. And I, I used to buy and sell on eBay years ago, but it turned into FeeBay. And I quit. I quit dealing with them. Yeah. Uh, here. I, I'd, I'd rather pay a few bucks more with Amazon and know that you have some recourse if something's not right. Nobody likes getting bad reviews or stuff like that with Amazon. So you get something that's a dud. They're probably going to make it right, or Amazon will make them make it right. So I felt pretty confident, you know, clicking the button for. 90 bucks and i gotta tell you i'm i'm loving that thing i haven't had like i said i only did the test yesterday but uh tomorrow morning i'll be out there uh, probably doing some fretboards and uh some other stuff to to see and i, and I just know it's going to perform just as well as that that other one so even their seven watt is well under 300 dollars. yeah well like I said, when I was getting ready to decide, because they were all on that same page, you know, you just click which one you want. It had a two and a half watt for, I can't even remember what it was, like 50 or 60 bucks, and had the 3.5 watt for 89.99. The five and a half watt, I believe, was 180 something, I think. And of course, the, the seven watt. But out of those four, only the three and a half and the five and a half were available with Prime. In other words, you click and two days later you get it. And I wanted to, you know, once I'd made up my mind I was going to go ahead and get it, I thought, well, I want to, get, you know, if I order it today, it was Tuesday, I'll have it Thursday. I can probably get a chance to put it in by the weekend and, um, you know, and get it checked out. So that's that's why I went with that one. Because I, I thought, well, since I only got a choice between those two, I'd rather spend 90 bucks right now than 186 And then if this one pans out and looks like it's going to, then I'll, I'll probably buy one of the bigger ones a little later. David Acklin, I don't think I've ever seen him in there before. Welcome. He's says he bought an Ender 3 3D printer yesterday. It hasn't come yet. Hope I didn't make a mistake. I'm not a fan of 3D printers. It's one of those been there, done that things for me. Um, the Ender 3 is a good product. But, but yeah, you but you won't have. A, in fact, I bought a, uh, 
uh, Creality CR10, did a video on it, and as soon as I did the video on it, uh, let's see, which one was it, GearBest or, yeah, I think it was GearBest, contacted me and said, hey, we'll send you Ender 3 if you'll do a review on it. So I said, sure, and they sent me one, and it was a good, good little printer. I just, you know, I felt like I was uh, kind of late to the game. I guess I'm not because other people are just getting into it. But, you know, it was about this time last year when I bought the first one. And then, like I said, they sent the end of the week shortly after that. So I had two of them. And I just couldn't find anything really useful to make with it. And I'm not saying that to be a smart butt or anything, but. At the end of the day, it's all plastic. Uh, you know, I got a machine out there. I can cut wood, aluminum, plastic if I need to. Um, and the other thing I didn't like is everything is so dadgum slow. Just to get the really good quality, you can't run it. You know, you can't run anything fast. You gotta, you gotta run it reasonably slow to. Uh, to get good quality i'd run it fast, you know because i'd i'd run it through cure and i'd say nah that's too that's too long i'm not going to take that long so i'd change things to make it run faster and then i'd run it and it would be crap you know so then i'd slow it back down and it and it ran pretty good but like i said at the end of the day to me it was all plastic uh <laughs> useful all my toys are amazing yeah yeah toys yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, and that's the thing. And again, I'm probably gonna make all you 3D printer people mad when I say this, but it's like all you ever see anybody make is like Star Wars stuff and uh, <laughs> Game of Thrones or all that stuff, and it's just something cute, and, you know, set on your shelf. And I'm like, man, what can you make that's useful with those things? And uh, yeah, I looked on Thingiverse, Joe. I know they got all kinds of crap on there, but it, again, it's still plastic. Uh, you know, I can do I can do stuff like this. So, and a whole lot quicker than I could have 3D printed something like that, and it wouldn't be near as good. It'd be plastic. This is aluminum. So, I mean, I'm not knocking if you if you're into 3D printing, good for you. Try to try to make something useful and quit making that stuff to fill up landfills. <laughs> I'm over it. I sold both of mine to. Uh, some guy, and I think he's got several, uh, several of those. And you know, we'll power to them if you like it. But I, it just wasn't for me. I didn't, I didn't like plastic. I didn't like it taking so long to run stuff. And then you might, you know, run four or five hours, be halfway into a project, and something happens. And you come back, and you got a thing of spaghetti on your table. So, I'm like, nah, that's uh, that's not for me. Uh, I'll stick to the uh, routers and lasers and mills and stuff like that. All right. Any other questions? I don't know how we got off on that. Uh, 3D print stuff. But, yeah, the, the Ender 3 is a good printer if, if you like 3D printing. Don't, don't take what I say is anything bad about the machines. They're fine machines. It's just that I didn't like that process doing the 3D stuff. All right. I don't think we have any more questions, so I guess we're going to sign off of here. Marty, uh, I'll get that uh, guitar boxed up. I'll go dig out that Mississippi plate and put it on there and uh, take some... Um, photos for the social media crowd and uh, get it sent to you. I have just the right box to uh, put it in. Jerry Brown says, are you going to do some in-depth videos on guitar builds? Um, I could, but you know, there's, there's so many people as far as um, 
the cigar box guitar stuff that have been doing it way longer than I have and they're way better at it than I am. And besides, I, you know, what makes it fun for me is to be able to incorporate, incorporate the CNC router and the laser and to do my own thing, which, you know, a lot of people in the CB, uh, CBG groups aren't a big fan of me, I'm sure, <laughs> because, because I'm, um, you know, I, that's not really a cigar box. You know, I've had some folks really kind of get on me about that stuff. But, uh, yeah, for, uh, Rob says, guitar bills equal no views. I, I, you know, the videos that I've got, and by the way, I, I wanted to mention this. Uh, I better do it now for the rest of them to drop off because now that the giveaway's over, they're out of here. Um, I started a new channel. You know, I had my YouTube channel, obviously, is, is Dave Gatton. That's what you're watching right now. But I, I started another channel called Dave Gatton Guitars, and I took the, the few videos that I'd done of the three and four stringer stuff that I'm doing, how I make, you know, different little bridges and, you know, all the kind of videos like that, how I do a set neck. And I moved them over to that channel. Uh, so that every time I posted one of those videos, the other people wouldn't unsubscribe and vice versa. <laughs> so, so anyway, so I'm starting over on that channel. I think I'm up to like, I don't know, 70 subscribers or something now. So if you do want to follow me on that stuff, go over to Dave Gatton Guitars YouTube channel and subscribe and hit the bell and all that. And what I'll do is, like I said, I won't be going through and doing complete builds and stuff like that. But when I do something uh, that somebody else that's that's new and may want to try to do it like the way I do, I'll do stuff and, and show them how to do it. I don't have any secrets. You know, I've showed, uh, show anybody what, you know, like I take pictures and show them what it looks like underneath there. It's not the, the license plate boxes and all. It's, it's nothing, uh, no big secret. It's, uh, Frankie said, he says, I want one of the table saw fences. You but you know, Frankie, I'm, uh, I, May have one of those somewhere. I've got one somewhere. I have to find it. Uh, but if you'll uh, email me your address, I'll send it to you because I know I've got one or two of those left. And I used to I used to sell those, and it just again it's something I had to deal with a fabricator because they would laser cut them and form them for me, and I wasn't selling that many, so I just did a run and then then I don't even try to sell them anymore but I, I think I got one left if you want it I'll send it to you that is why I don't particularly like their chewed out of a two before look will your CNC make rifle stocks yeah it would if absolutely I make one You could do it. Oh, I see now. That's Richard Latchow, an old high school buddy of mine. Yeah, looking forward to seeing you, uh, Richard, in the end of September. We got a reunion coming up. Yeah. Okay, Frankie. The guitar guys like rustic stuff, but not the cool ones Dave makes. Well, I just, you know, like, I don't know. I just like doing it because you can, you know, you can use a, a, a CNC and, and, and like I said, there's nothing fancy about this really. When I mean, it may look fancy from this view, but it's really just a hogged out. This started out as a, a tuba 12, a Southern yellow pine construction grade lumber from Lowe's <laughs> and it, it's CNC like this, and it's all hollowed out. And then I make a a quarter inch plywood back panel. So that's what makes these things sounds good, sound good. Is they're they're hollow because the neck is a set neck, so the neck only comes up to here. Well, you can see it probably better from that side. It only comes up to right there. 
All the rest of this is hollow. And so technically, I know the, the cigar box folks don't like that, but technically it's like a cigar box. It's just a guitar shaped cigar box because it's a, it's a wooden box with a lid. Only I use, use it like this and put, put the lid on the back. So anyhow. Okay, Richard. Yeah, I'll um, I can do them one of two ways. I can do them with a uh, a uh, where I do a double sided carving, or I can do them with a rotary axis. But I'd have to create a model, a three D model for both. Either way, I win. So. But I can do it. You got something special you want. Can Trevor show his vacuum hose arm? Let <clears throat> me lock it on you, Trevor. Hopefully my uh, hopefully my lights don't get in the way. There we go. I got it set up so that as the machine moves, that swivels along with it. It just runs down in behind my machine and off to my shop back over in the far left side here. Yeah, that's that's kind of a neat way. I know Michael Mertzke, I think, has something similar. That's that's basically what I dubbed it as was the uh, the Mertzke style. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's collector hose holder. I have, you know, now, of course, I've got drag chain for my wiring that runs along the back of my gantry, but mm -hmm. my uh, my two hoses for my water cooled spindle or running through nothing that fancy i've got like a piece of conduit running through a couple of brackets and just a piece of mdf suspended with a hole in it and i've got those hoses ran so that it just keeps them up out of the way yeah uh, it's not anything near that uh, that fancy I did, it the, I did it the same way but i only used like three inches of the the orange hose that came with it and then I bought these little adapters that uh, take me from that size up to the quarter inch hose. And I just ran my quarter inch hose, both hoses along with it. And then it comes over to my bucket off to the far side here. Yeah. Keith, Keith Painter wants to know, is that plywood, the, the arm? Uh, no, that's just standard old pine. Standard pine. Okay. Yeah. And I just uh, made a little C type of shape bracket up at the top. And then it's got uh uh, wooden dowels I drilled down into a couple little blocks of, of wood and I just twist them up in there and it's it, it goes in there super tight and makes it so that if I ever want to pull the whole thing down I can just pop the two pins out the whole thing comes and good to go but it swings real smooth yeah 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 Frankie you're absolutely right he says don't buy the Home Depot lumber a 35% chance it will cup on you after removing that much material. Yeah, I found, I found that out the hard way as I started, because the first few I did <laughs> bought from Home Depot and just got the Cuba 12s. And apparently they're a lot wetter than uh, the ones from Lowe's because I, w once you mill all that material out, you know, because I they're roughly an inch and a half thick, and I want what is going to be the top. Like I said, I'm, I'm milling it like, oh, I got it stuck in. I was going to say, you're still showing me, dude. All right. Yeah, once you're, once you're milling it <clears throat> here, you know, this is going to be the top. Well, I want this to be thin so it will resonate. So I go down about one and five sixteenths. So depending on how close this is to an inch and a half, this thickness is going to be somewhere between an eighth and uh, three sixteenths, so you get a good, uh, you know, you get a good sound out of it when you get them hollow. But if you take all that out, the whole shell, they'll they'll, especially the Home Depot ones, they'll they'll bow up like a bowl. And I've I've made really some pretty guitar shaped firewood on some of that. And then I bought, uh, then I started buying my tube of twelves from Lowe's and I found that, the, like I said, I don't have a moisture meter, but apparently they're a lot drier because what I do is I bring them home and immediately cut them into 16 inch long blanks and I bring them in here in the house 
and stack them up and let them set before I ever cut them. But uh, I've had much better results with uh, the, the lumber I get from um, Lowe's uh, you know, as opposed to Home Depot. So, all right, I guess we're going to wrap this up. Uh, thank you all. Yeah, we're down to like 62 or so watching now, so some of them dropped out. I want to thank you guys for uh, hanging in here. Um, I know I know it had to be tough for some of you uh, CBG folks, you know, having to come sit through <laughs> a CNC uh, show talking about lasers and routers and all that kind of stuff uh, just to wait for us to get to the drawing. But uh, anyway, so I appreciate you sticking around and hope you enjoyed, uh, hope you enjoyed the show. Um, we will be doing this again. Uh, like I said, it, I love giving stuff away like this. I think these drawings are fun. And can you consider a CNC build chat? I have to think about that. I'm not sure exactly what you mean. Uh, you're very welcome, Marty. Um, I hope uh, I hope you enjoy that. Hope you enjoy that guitar. Uh, yeah. So anyway, thanks everybody for uh, tuning in. Uh, we'll probably do. Uh, let me just go ahead and commit right now. Let's just do that. All right. This is the well. It's technically the fourth Saturday because the first fell on a Saturday. We're going to do one on July the twentieth. That'll be the next giveaway. We'll do another one. And y'all uh, give me comments on whether you, you know, I mean, the whole thing was try to give away uh, these license plate guitars because so many people had given me license plates. But if anybody would want, uh, you know, want me to give away one of these other ones, uh, maybe, let me know your comments if you would want me to do that or not. Um Anyhow, we're going to get out of here. Javi, thank you so much for running the, uh, the monitor in the chat for me and especially doing the number generator. Happy to do it, Dave. Uh, Jim Sinicola, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you, Dave. Uh, you're, I enjoyed seeing your ukulele, and good luck on your future builds because, you know, what they say, you can't just build one. Um, I mean – kind of some truth to that. <laughs> um, and Trevor thank you as always my uh, favorite Canadian uh, and thanks for that that Amazon link that time too that because uh, that the he's the one that started sending me that link no problem to ox lasers but I'm so far I'm sold on them I'll be doing another video on that one uh, I'm gonna you know get some miles on this one and then do another video and do a review but I hope Hope that it will be uh, positive because I don't I don't expect any trouble with it. Uh, All righty, so uh, we are out, I guess. Um, let's see, today's twenty uh, second. Everybody have a great weekend. Be safe if you're in the path of these storms. Watch out. I know we've we've had some doozies. For, Fortunately, the past couple of days, they've been kind of north of Atlanta uh, and missed me. But uh, anyhow, we're going to get out of here. Thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend and good night. Good night. I don't. Later.